today, and uh, today's video, I want to talk to you about hair loss. Uh, one of the most common and frustrating complaints that I hear from women when it comes to hypothyroidism is hair loss, and millions of people with hypothyroidism experience hair loss, and this can really have a terrible impact on, on not only self-confidence, but your, your self-esteem. Uh, frequently, having the person take synthetic or, or even natural thyroid hormone can often help correct the thyroid hormone imbalance, which will usually help with the thyroid hair loss. However, this isn't always the case, and uh, there can be many other causes of hair loss in people with hypothyroidism. Whatever the cause may be with, uh, as it relates to thyroid hair loss in, in the person with hypothyroidism, the ideal goal really should be to correct the underlying cause of the thyroid imbalance. And while some people with hypothyroidism do need to take synthetic or even natural thyroid hormones on, on a permanent basis, others can have their, their health restored, regain their hair, have more energy, sleep better, lose weight through a natural restorative thyroid approach. And when the true cause of your thyroid disorder is addressed, the thyroid hair, the thyroid hair loss problem many times will be corrected. So while hair loss is often the result of, of a thyroid disorder, there are other potential causes of hair loss that really need to be investigated. And we're gonna be talking about those in this video. One area of significant importance uh, is an imbalance in your body's sex hormones. You know, a very common problem that I see in men and women is the imbalance in these hormones that, uh, you know, namely estrogen and progesterone, testosterone, but also something called cortisol and DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Estrogen dominance, for example, can also lead to hair loss in people with hypothyroidism. So can elevated levels of cortisol, and so can the increased or elevated levels of DHT, okay? Now, the problem is that many endocrinologists fail to evaluate the estrogen, uh, to evaluate this part of the body, or fail to look at the body from a holistic perspective, and so they often don't do these tests. And so, you know, in order to properly evaluate someone for, for hair loss, not only do you have to look at the thyroid, but you also have to look at estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, you have to look at DHT, and you have to look at the cortisol levels on every single patient that comes in with hair loss. And those that do usually will only perform, uh, those endocrinologists that, that is, those endocrinologists that do perform uh, tests on hormones um, typically only test for, for maybe do a, what's called a one sample test. And although that might be sufficient for menopausal women, it's definitely not adequate for cycling women, women who have a, you know, an ongoing menstrual cycle. For cycling women, their hormones are in a constant state of fluctuation, which is why a one sample test isn't sufficient to determine whether they have estrogen dominance. And this is really why I recommend a comprehensive cycling female hormone panel uh, test, not only for cortisol and DHEA, DHEA but also for DHT. Uh, but also, uh, well, the nice thing about this test is that it's gonna give us a nice graph um, showing us the, the, uh, the output of estrogen and progesterone really every three days of a, of a woman's cycle. And so when someone with hypothyroidism has hair loss due to estrogen dominance, putting that person on a specific natural thyroid restorative protocol can really help correct this condition and really turn that person's life around. There really are other possible causes of hair loss in people with hypothyroidism, such as medications, things like antidepressants, things like oral contraceptives, birth control pills, for example, um, as well as nutritional deficiencies. Some people with a zinc deficiency will experience hair loss. People that are under chronic stress can also uh, lead to hair loss. And, and of course, many people deal with chronic stress on a regular basis. So in these cases, correcting the cause of cells and they're involved typically during a stress response and what happens typically during a stress response is that we have a down regulation of a very specific enzyme that's needed for the conversion of T4 into T3. So again these inflammatory cytokines, this stress response is going to impair the conversion of T4 into T3. So fixing this problem really is going to require specialized lab testing to one determine the root cause of the inflammation and also the sites of where this poor conversion is taking place. 
Now it's also necessary to evaluate and understand this area in the brain uh, or, or this axis so to speak and, and maybe you're familiar with it, maybe it's, it's, this is new to you. It's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis or what's called the HPA axis for short. This is really the brain and the adrenal connection. And this is a big part of that stress response that is responsible for causing poor thyroid conversion. Now, by using safe and natural interventions, we can help assist the parts of the body in normalizing that stress response and then in turn optimizing that T4 to T3 conversion. This is really where one situation where taking thyroid hormone replacement, T4 replacement hormone, Synthroid, Levothyroxine, really would not work because 90% of the time, the synthetic T4 that's being prescribed can't get converted into the active form of T3. And this may have happened to you. Now, another root uh, cause or, or source of, of why you may have poor thyroid uh, under conversion is really due to increased gastrointestinal permeability. This is also, may, may, you may have heard this uh, being called a leaky gut. And this can happen for a variety of different reasons, okay? This can be due to either food sensitivities, such as gluten. It could be toxins that are being produced by certain types of bacteria. So in other words, there's a lot of different causes behind this. So what are some of the other causes? Well, think about this. Have you ever been on antibiotics? Have you ever been on or do you take antacids on a regular basis that's going to reduce your stomach acid, make you more prone to an infection? Are you eating the standard American diet that's loaded with grains and loaded with sugars and loaded with bad kinds of fats, right? This problem can be addressed uh, again here by the right kind of specialized gastrointestinal lab panels that when they're done can identify not only which foods are contributing to this bacterial overgrowth, but also what be, could be contributing to the poor conversion, okay? Now I see patients every day that have histories that just scream thyroid problems, yet they continue to suffer because no one has really ever taken the time or looked at the whole picture uh, or properly investigated why this person may not be converting T4 into T3, okay? So what you need to be here is you need to be a really good investigator and that really only starts when the doctor that you're visiting or the doctor that you're seeing or the doctor that you're working with is going to spend time, and get this, the doctor has to spend time listening to his patient, okay? That doesn't really happen in, in today's day and age. So when this is found, proper testing to determine the source of this underconversion can be investigated, okay? And this is, a, this is again, a, this is a big problem that we see over and over and over again. So let's just do a quick review here. Five major points I want you to walk away with. Number one, thyroid underconversion is one pattern of thyroid disorders that are missed typically because doctors are gonna fail to order the complete thyroid panel, okay, which would include a T3. There are five other patterns that I cover in, in other videos, but each pattern is treated just a little bit differently, okay? And that's a really important distinction for you to understand. If you don't have the proper testing, you'll never know which pattern that your specific thyroid disorder is gonna fall into, okay? Number two, thyroid underconversion occurs when the body can't convert inactive T4 into its active state T3, okay? Number three, the, the, number th the, the third point that I want you to take away with today is that specialized testing is going to be required in order to understand the source of this underconversion problem. Number four, the areas of poor thyroid conversion, areas that are going to need to be investigated, are going to be the liver, the gut, the adrenal glands. Okay, and number five, and this problem is really, um, or I should say number five, this problem can in most cases be corrected naturally with dietary changes and personalized supplementation. Well, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer. I hope this video sheds some light on why you feel the way you do. I hope it also serves as uh, just some encouragement and it gives you some answers as to why you may not be feeling good because of a poor T4 to T3 conversion problem. If you like this video, please share it with someone who's struggling and just looking for safe, natural solutions to restoring their thyroid function. Take care.